The Yusan Nation is a state within Signals that most of the cast and all the locations within take place as a part of. The multi-planet nation was founded by the founders and fought for its independence from the Empire during the revolution. It is now locked in a war with the Empire seeking to conquer the remaining planets that are held by the former. In today's video, I will cover this nation as well as the lore surrounding it. So really, with no more delay, let's just get right into this. <laughs> So, let's start this video off with the history of the Yusan Nation, really events that happened long before the events of the game. So, we're going to start off with the Civil War. Likely sometime after the Empress's death, the founders of the nation rose up in a civil war against the Empire. The nation would use colonization to take some planets, like Rotfront, Wang, and Heimat, Heimat being where they would name their new capital, and then they would proceed to fight the Empire over its planets of Bouillon, Kiziath, and Vignetta. It is known that part of the reason behind the revolution was the desire to not worship by a resonance as much as the Empire had, which had become a society that was extremely stratified with by a resonance on the top. The war would be particularly focused over the planet of Vignetta, which is the homeworld of humanity. This was an extremely violent and bloody battle between the nation and the empire. However, ultimately, following the detonation of nuclear bombs, flooding, and lots of other mass carnage, the battle would be forced to a close, with the nation coming out victorious at extremely heavy costs, seemingly including the destruction of the planet's moon. The state of the war currently, when the events of the game is going on, is that the war has kind of changed focus following the victory on Vignetta as now the nation is attempting to rebuild its lost homeworld while the Empire's fleet is trying to focus on destroying supply lines and attempting to starve out the reconstruction efforts. This attempt at attrition could be working honestly as we see Rotfront has been forced to ration power and Vignetta has reports of mass starvation. However, due to the censorship of information from the state, there is little to no actual way to know how the war is going by the events of the game. So, we can kind of switch over from how we got here to the structure of the Yusan Nation. The Yusan Nation is very reliant on replicas, with these units having priority over distolds in every instance that we see the two. The chain of command seems to differ depending on the planet and in the field, but by analyzing documents we can learn the general structure of both Rotfront and Leng. Starting off with Rotfront, or the civilian structure. As the structure of the Yusan Nation on Rotfront is more based around, you know, civilian structure and society. And we see a chain of, support of command that goes as follows. So at the bottom of society, you have Gestalt students. These would be Arian, Issa, Erika, who are simply students in the process of training for military service. Above the students is the standard worker Gestalt of the city. These are civilians that have completed their mandatory military service and now do assorted jobs within the city. On a similar tier to these would be the workers of the Yule class. Yules serve as teachers, cleaners, and accountants for the city, putting them above the Gestalt and on a more technical role within the city's functioning. Solidly above both of those classes is the overview structure of the city, of which stars seem to be the majority of the cadre deployed to ensure the safety of the city or block. Above these police units is the block ward, or the head of this entire security detail would be the block ward. This Calibri unit is a high-ranking member of the city who presides over others and ensures the city is run properly. Possibly above them, or on a similar ranking to them, is the Kinsir unit. This unit can only be seen in one note, and in that note they can be seen overviewing the block work, suggesting that they are either above this unit or on a similar tier where they can advise this commanding unit. Above both of these, however, is Aeon Headquarters. We know very little about the headquarters, but the company holds vast connections to the running of the nation, with it controlling the command structure of Rotfront, owning the facilities on Wang, and having vast connections to the replica production and arming process. There is also the Founders, who, while it's unknown if they are alive or dead, or if they are figureheads or actually control the state, in fact, we know little to nothing about the Founders, it could be assumed that they are either on an equal tier to Aeon or above Aeon. Moving from Rotfront and the civilian structure, we can look at Wang and the re-education structure. 
The structure of Wang is a bit different than what is in Radhra, and is more focused on a re-education and waiver structure. At the bottom of Wang, once again, is the Gestalts. These are the subjects of re-education, as well as the forced labor in the factories and mines of the facility. Above the Gestalts are the low-ranking replicas, be it the Yules who act as teachers, cleaners, and maids, or the Myaina units, which help clear out rocks alongside the Gestalts, and finally the Ara units, which repair the vents and other engineering tasks. Above these units would be your Protector Corps, which is clearly segmented into different ranks. Starting off would be the high-ranking Yules, who run paperwork, another various thing for the running of the facility. Solidly above those would be the Star Units, who act as personnel that patrol the halls and maintain order. Of these Star Units, a select few officers are specifically ranked above their fellow units. And above even these Star Officers would be your Storch Units. These high-ranking commanders help coordinate the Star Units and maintain discipline, with them acting primarily as units who work in interrogation or in the interrogation wing of re-education. Among the Storches is a select leader, the Storch who is the rationing officer. In S23's case, this is Storch Sieben. But above her weighs the Calibri Cadre. This interconnected network of units acts as a coordination between different cadres and the command structure, as well as lower-ranked replicas. The Calibris then answer to Falk, who directs her orders via bioresonance into the group, who then relayed across the facility. To assist in the running of the facility, there is also the Ador unit. General Political Ideals The Yusan nation is clearly inspired by the ideals of authoritarianism and the existence of a powerful state, as well as a lack of self. However, examining the notes, propaganda, and dialogue, one can piece together some of its political ideals. So, starting off, we have lack of self. Within Signalis, there's many pieces of propaganda that reaffirm the ideal that in the Yusan nation there is no idea of self or freedom but rather civ citizens and civilians are just members of the state. The Rule of Six is one common example, showcasing the lack of individual property members of the state are allowed to possess or own. Thought control. The nation also demonstrates strong degrees of thought control, with bans on several pieces of text, re-educational ideals, and strict state surveillance done through the military replicas, protectors, or through literal cameras. The nation is also clearly a military-dominated society, with replicas who are built for the military having strong control over large parts of the society, be it the entirety of S-23 or being the watch unit in charge of the rot from Brock. The nation has mandatory military service, which seems to be the main purpose of their education system, and overall, the military dominates the ideals of the society. The Aeon Corporation and the state are heavily fused together, this showing a high level of state-corporation interconnection with it controlling vast parts of the running of the replica units that dominate Yusan society. This connection shows that the state is in part controlled by the corporation or corporations. And finally, a cult of personality. The nation, much like many other authoritarian states, demonstrates a cult of personality, in their case towards the founders of the state who are greatly revered in the state, and whose images are shown in almost every room, showcasing just how important they are to the ideals of the revolution and the country as a whole. But that really covers the basics of understanding the Yusan Nation and the lore. There's a lot more to look into it, but the thing with the Yusan Nation overall is that it's a lot easier to look at the independent units and independent parts and understand them and what they independently say about the nation as a whole than looking at the nation as a whole as its own thing because that's not really the main focus of the game directly, or at least in my opinion. Either way, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like my videos, feel free to subscribe, it helps the channel out. And if you'd like to talk to either me or other Signalis fans about the game, theories, lore, or even modding, I have a link to my dis Discord VSL below. This has been Christopher Beast, and I hope to see you all next time.